welcome to video number two on Gravit Designer. In our last video, we looked at the concept of creating compound shapes, that is basically taking more than a single shape, uh, two or more shapes, and combining them in some way, whether that is adding them together or subtracting one from the other, um, or doing intersections and, and differences. So today, we're going to look at how you take those compound shapes and actually make them even more um, modifiable through the use of paths. So in the last video you saw this fish that was made up of a number of different shapes that currently are just layered on top of each other other than this one compound shape here that looks like a football which is basically the combination of two different ellipses and they were um, intersected, meaning that it took the two different ellipses and placed, it took the center of the two of them as they were overlapped. So if I take a look at this selection of orange shapes here, that is this compound football shape and these three triangles, I can now take these and I can make them a union. I can combine them and now they are one single shape. Notice, however, that the eyeball that I had here that was made up of two ellipses appears to be gone. It's not actually gone. What happens is it fell behind the compound shape as the compound shape got created. So if I take that compound shape and bring it below the ellipses, those eyeball pieces will reappear. They have come back to the surface. So why is a compound shape important? Well, the thing about compound shapes is that now it is a it's technically a single shape that could then be resized and moved around and even reshaped and rotated all as if it were one shape. Differently though than other um, graphic design programs like Illustrator, one of the, the unique things about Gravit is that I can take those individual shapes, even though this is a compound shape, I can still take those individual shapes and if I select them, I can, I can move them around even though when I go back to click on it, it is still a compound shape. So even after combining them, I can modify different parts to make it look the way I want it to. Okay, so there's my different three different triangles and my um, football shape made into one single shape. All right, well, today is actually not about compound shapes. Today is about paths. And what I'm going to show you is that in addition to being able to take a shape like this and being able to move it around and reshape it, we can really begin to modify the look of it once we create a path. And the way you create a path is you select the shape that you want, in this case our compound shape, and the new tool that I'm going to introduce today is up here in the top right, and that is Convert to Path. So with those shapes, that compound shape selected, I can now Convert to Path it doesn't look like anything happened other than if you look at the layers panel over here to the left, you'll notice that now it just says path. What's happened is those individual shapes can no longer be selected. They're, they're actually gone. This is now a single new path. And the way I go to modify this one, I can still, you know, I can still take it and modify it this way and I can still rotate it if I want to. But even more importantly, using my pointer, I can switch to sub-select. And the sub-select tool, when chosen, brings up these points along the path. And with each of these points now, I can select an individual point and move it anywhere else on the screen. And this really allows me to reshape what my fish will look like. So, for example, if I wanted a tail that maybe came out a little larger. I click on this um, point here and I drag it out. I can take this point here and drag it out this way. And so I'm going to take a couple moments here just sort of without even um, maybe talking too much. I'm just going to take some time to reshape this fish. And I might find that when I'm modifying this new path, that there are points along the path that either I don't need 
or there are areas where I would like to add a new point. And so I'm looking right here, and maybe I don't need this point. If I just hit my delete key on my keyboard when that point is selected, I can get rid of it. I can also add new, path, new points on the path. So if I were to click right here and notice that my pointer changed a bit to have a little uh, extra icon on it, I've basically allowed myself to create new points along that path. And I can take those new points and move them around. So suddenly, using three new points, I can make a mouth. All right, and I'm finding this one here probably don't need. Maybe even this one I don't need. So I'm reducing the paths that I, reducing the points that I don't need, and then adding any points that I might want to add to make the shape more to my liking. All right. And then the other thing you can do with all of these points, with each individual point, you'll notice that they've got um, these little, th these little like antennas sticking out of them. Okay. And if you explore these and see how they work, you'll notice that they allow for further modification of your point. This property, if I go over to the properties panel, it's called a joint property. And each of these can be selected for any given point. So for example, if I wanted to take this tail point here, and rather than having it a squared off point, I wanted to make it round, I could select the mirrored joint here. And now, my point can be modified differently. Okay, I could even pick a disconnected joint. And this one allows me to take a single side, move it this way, take this single side, move it that way. So lots of options have opened up with the use of points along a path and the joint properties for each of those points. I might want to round this one off too because I kind of like the look of having it a little bit more sleek. Maybe I'll round this one off as well. So suddenly the ability to change what used to be very primitive or basic shapes is now really opened up with, with points along a path. Okay, that wraps it up for converting to a path. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to create some paths from scratch using the pen tool.